Joe, I don't want to freak you out, but I think I'm your best friend. You also cross your legs like a little girl. We're in love. That's weird. What do you want to happen when you die? I don't, I mean, I'll be dead, so I guess I don't really care. That's pathetic. I don't care. Every time I go to the doctor, I think I'm dying. Joe, that doesn't make any sense. It's deeper than that, but yes. Some people are anti-organ donors. I'm not an organ donor. Bro, get out. You're done. Your contracts are done. YouTube's done. You're done. Your whole family's done. No. What? What's next for you, man? Outside of the girls, like, trying to have, like, small talk with me while they're, like, poking me in the ass. It's, okay, I, I don't know what you just said, but all right. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another fantastic episode of Don't Be Sour. It's a friends and family episode. We have Joe the Giraffe back for, like, the 17th time. What's up, man? It's like the fourth time, but what up? Woo! This is the first late day podcast we've done. I feel awake. Feel good. When do we normally film? Spicy one, like morning. I always come at like 9 a.m. We're ripping shots at 9 a.m.? Yes. Mm, I don't know about that. You know what? That's something special about this. It's not actually when this, because I've decided that every fourth episode is going to be with friends, a.k.a. with you, because um, you're the only person that I hang out with. Max has no friends. Yeah. So every, it's going to be three episodes, then, then one of these, which is just, you know, it's casual. It's a lot of fun. But guess, guess what? This episode... What? To top it off there? I had to okay, top it off. Not, okay. This episode right now that I'm yeah. filming is the 50th episode. I'm uh, uh, almost a year of doing this podcast, Joe. Is this my fifth? I don't know. If it's my fifth, I'm 10% of your podcast. I don't, no one knows how to do that math like that, but cheers, dude. Cheers to the podcast. What is, is it? Is tequila? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ugh. Bro, that is freaking ass. It's not very good tequila. Let me ask you this, Joe. Did, did, did you think that I would do this podcast for coming up on one year? In two weeks, it'll be a year. Yeah. Really? I don't doubt you, dude. I got your back. I, mean, I didn't think it would be as good as it is. I thought it would kind of suck. I thought you were going to like pull the entry-level fitness influencer, you know, get a couple like cheap little mics, sit at like a fold-out table and call it a day. Well, the whole, my whole mindset behind this was if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right and I'm going to build it out and it's yeah. going to be like a top level set. I feel like podcasts are now the thing that everyone's starting to do, but it's difficult. As much as you think it's easy to say. Everyone down, thinks it's easier. Even me. I'm like, I can't, I don't time to make a video, but I can do a podcast. But I think it's hard to do like good podcasts. Well, it's hard just to get guests. If you know people now, but. I know. I, I'm traveling all over the freaking country. And I said this in a YouTube video, but. The biggest thing that I want people to take away from this podcast, however long it goes on, like I'm going to keep going as long as people are watching it. But at some point, like my, my network of people, I've already gone a little bit out of my network. It's run out. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to, but, but no one can doubt my ability over the past 50 episodes that I have put in the effort to get guests travel. What's the minimum you'll do? Like what number are you like? I can retire like a hundred, like after a hundred, if you don't really have guests, you're like, I'm done. Or is there no number? It's just, I'm just going to keep doing it until it's, it... It's when I run out of guests. It, it, it's like... Yeah, but you can do them with friends and stuff. Or you can repeat guests. I've been on five fucking times. Freaking. Um, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I, I really enjoy it. And like, I'm, I'm not really making any money from it. I think you go Joe Rogan style. You just have whoever you want on and you make them come to you. Because it eliminates the stress part of it. Like, I think you need to travel right now, but eventually you just... Whoever's available, just do a You know, a, after two episodes and them popping off, it was like Christian and Heidi. Obviously, they're going to yeah. pop off. I DM'd Joe Rogan and was like, hey, dude, I have a podcast. <laughs> you know, he looked as like, you want to come on? No, he, he never opened it. Uh, do you want to know who actually who replied to my DM today that I sent them like years ago? Gary V. And he goes, an Sor one. sorry, I missed this. And I'm like, well, it's been like a year. Uh, so maybe he was reaching out to DM me, but I'm going to try to get him on. But he's a super busy guy. He's probably trying to like sell you something. Do you think if I fucking went in, it was yeah. like Gary V, dude? What the fuck is your value, bro? It's probably automated message, actually. I feel like Gary Vee just blasts like a random thousand influencers trying to get him to like come onto his little contracts and stuff. Well, he said my name and then I asked him to come to the podcast and he said, I don't want to make any promises. Sad face. It's chat GPT right there. That wasn't him. That was AI. Mm. Yeah, he didn't have time for that. If you if you had your own podcast, which yeah. you own about 10 percent of this podcast with your, mm -hmm. your guest features, who would be like the dream people you would want on your show? Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Um, like if, you, if anyone like, would like say top yes. five? Yeah. Elon Musk. Okay. Definitely want him. The owner of Titter. Yeah. Give me Joe Rogan. So I feel like it'd be fun. Okay. Then I'm going to veer off. Then I think I'm going like Sebastian Vettel. 
Who's the that? F1 driver. Real interesting dude. It, like wait, is a, that the other Red Bull guy? No. Well, I think he raced a long time. He's like most recently Aston Martin. He used to be Ferrari. Aston all kinds Martin? Of stuff. Yeah. Lewis Hamilton be another sick person to do a podcast with. Another car guy? Yeah. You can't have two car guys. Why not? Okay. Because they're both going to be right, like, yes, right. I go I'll really keep, fast right, and I get along. paid $30 million. Oof. <sighs> Joe Biden. I would love to do a podcast with Joe Biden. What would you talk about? What would you talk about? I get Joe- arrested 100%. I'd be, I'd be canceled. But it'd be fun. Fifth. I don't really know. There's no like big actors or anything. Like I'm thinking like Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, Larry David. Larry David would be cool, but I'm thinking like no, Dave Chappelle. I would love to talk to Dave Chappelle for an hour. Yeah. Be an interesting dude, yeah. That's my five, I guess. When you mentioned about getting canceled, one thing that I... Well, I mean, no, it's probably only like one one thing that people love about you is that you're edgy. Not really. You say what people are thinking. Probably. And it doesn't seem to phase you of like, you're, you don't worry about getting canceled. No. Let me ask you, what do you think the line is to be edgy, opinionated, not a sheep? Like I, I say it how it is, but not like, like what is, what is the thing that someone would get into that would cross that line of like, whoa, bro, I love how you just like say what you think and you're not afraid to be who you are versus, bro, get out. You're done. Your contracts are done. YouTube's done. You're done. Your whole family's done. There's some stuff Death you can't talk about. Yeah, there's some stuff you can't. That's it. You can't even say, no. you can't even talk about, you can't even say the topics. Kanye West found that line. He, he stepped right over the line. Do you think people can truly get canceled? No. I think unless because- you- Look, the shit that I say, which I'm not even like, I wouldn't say I'm like edgy, but the shit that I say, 95% of people agree with these opinions. Do you think the edgy There's people a think very loud edgy? Fi- Yeah, 100%. There's a very loud 5% of people that make way more noise and go crazy over like stupid shit. And those are the people that'll comment like a paragraph down below, like fuck this show guy doesn't blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, everyone's pretty chill. So I feel like you can get away with saying kind of whatever you think. Cause like at the end of the day, most logical people are on the same page. I think. Mm. Silent majority, dude. Was there a point in your life where you decided to start being outlandish? Or yeah, been- I would say I was like three years old. Does that stem from like your your family? Like, was your dad like I, I just kind of call it how I see it, and that's how you picked it up? Or probably, yeah. Or just like you watch a lot no, of South, always, South Park. A lot of I think a lot of the humor and stuff, and like growing up in like the cod lobbies and stuff. Like you just got away with. I'm not say got away with, but like yeah, you just spoke your mind. What do you think would happen in your life for you to like not be so outspoken? Like if, if Red Bull signed you like a crazy that, contract. I've, I've had that already happen. So there's, there's influencers that are smaller than me that get less views than I get and have contracts and like deals with like Porsche. They have like Porsche will fly them to Germany and do a whole thing with them or whatever. And I'm like, I'm pushing Porsche nonstop and I've never even been looked at. That's how I feel that like Jeep. definitely has a lot to do with, I think, my audience and what I say. Or the fact that you don't upload content for eight years. That too. But even when I was uploading content, like I've never been approached by any of the big brands because I think it's just like a little, like I'm probably not their, their ideal person. I, I really don't think you can actually get canceled unless you literally delete someone from this planet or you like do, do some, you know, little, little, little inappropriate stuff. I feel like you don't, don't say anything really, really stupid. Yeah, but I think you can essentially- Don't fuck with kids. That'll, that'll mess you up real quick. Balenciaga, mm. don't, don't fuck with kids. Just like leave kids out of it. That's, that's the issue right now with like the whole LGBTQIA thing. It's like they're bringing kids into it. You don't fuck with kids. Like documentary, like don't fuck with kittens or whatever. Don't fuck with kids. Oh, I never saw that. Very interesting. It's about actual cats. But, but I, I'm just saying like, that's like you don't, don't mess with kids and you're probably okay. As soon as you start messing with kids, everybody gets- Or upset. animals. Yeah, don't ever fuck with animals. That's not a good idea. But would I, but I feel like no matter what, people are outraged at something, then they're going to have people that are going to going to decide I stand with you or I'm against you. But then like over time, everyone just forgets everything. Yeah. Like there's been some crazy shit that celebrities and everyone has done. And you just years, years later, everyone's just like, ah, it's, it's whatever, dude. People forget. But then why do people, if people can forget and move on and celebrities can like, you know, become better people. Why do people pull up like tweets and Facebook posts from 20 like you know 10 years ago of people and be like gotcha you really don't like somebody gotta get something on them start going do you think you should be in trouble for things you said over 10 years ago depends what it is i think if 10 years ago you said we should kill a whole race of people like 
probably shouldn't have said that. Probably in, but if like 10 years ago, you're like, oh, I, I don't even know what you could say that you get away with. But I'm just like, no, nah, I think you're good. Mm. It depends what you say. Okay, dude. Well, what's new with you? Um, not much. Work's kind of chilling out a little bit. Got some more free time. It's been a month. It's been a month since our la- people have seen you last. Yeah. And the YouTube video mm-hmm. that Joe has promised every podcast that by this pod, because we always film them like a week or two yeah. before the episode comes out. And Joe's like, by you that jumped the last one, you jumped up a week. And that's why I didn't delete my YouTube channel. Cause like, I thought I had an extra week. Guys, Joe has been on this show. I think three times yeah. and the video that he said would be up on his channel has still, it's been months, bro. Yeah. And it's, I have all, not it, posted a YouTube video in six months. Why? I just don't feel like it. Honestly, like that's really the, so the video that I said I was going to post, it's done. It's ready. I'm just like, I think I want two done before I post one. So I can like at least get a couple of videos out. Cause I know myself, I'll post this one. Something will come up. I'll get busy. And then I won't post another one for four months. So I'm like, at this point, I'm just going to start like stockpiling them. And then I'll just drop all of them at once. Look, I, I get the, I do. I get the difference of like, I do it when I have time. It's not like my livelihood, whatever. Yeah. But if you go months and months and months, and then you like despise wanting to do that upload and then you're like dread the idea of thinking of another one like what if you actually you're very good at making youtube videos but yeah. what, what if you just don't actually like it that's an internal battle i've been fighting yeah i think i really enjoy the cinematic side of it and stuff i don't really enjoy the like vlogging i yeah we know your opinion on that you think everyone yeah. that vlogs at target and stuff is pretty stupid. much yeah so i think that's my like biggest thing is like i don't have anything to film so i just don't make a video but I think people like you. No, I know. I think I do pretty interesting stuff. I just don't feel like filming it sometimes. Maybe. Do, you, do, do, do you not like filming it because you think people are going to overthink it? Or, or I think you're overthinking the content more than people yeah, think about 100%. your content. Yeah, yeah. I, I could 100% make videos about nothing and get views. I just don't want to. But I've been doing that. I've changed my mind. You know? I've been doing that for 10 years. I know. Okay, so no YouTube videos uploaded. No. Nope. What, what else is going on? You, your, your life is changing because you're moving. I'm about to move, yeah. Yeah, I got a pretty solid... Uh, Let's walk through that. Well, due to some external factors, like COOF and some other stuff, the housing market has gone insane. Okay. It's uh, up again. It's way up right now, yeah. It was down. Yeah. yeah. Now it's up. Yeah. So it's a really good time to sell your house uh, because there's still people out there stupid enough to buy homes with a 7% interest rate, so whatever. It's a really bad time to buy a house. So I am selling my house because it's getting older and I just... I don't feel like dealing with the little things that are starting to happen. Um, Joe had some light bulbs go out. So he just don't No, want like AC and pool and just a lot of money. And I, it's starting to get to that age where like, and also it's a 5,000 square, you know, it's like I have four bedrooms and everything else. Like I don't need, I don't have a kid or anything. There's no reason for me to live in this big ass house and like pay this much for electricity and, and all this stuff. So Joe's like, my house is just too big. It really is. Too fancy. It, it, it actually is. So, um, yeah, no, I'm going to sell the house. And then obviously I can't buy another house right now. I might buy a lot. And then I'm looking at moving into an a lot of houses. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With some grass on them. But um, probably going to move into a high rise for until the market corrects a little bit. I, it's, it's almost like I'm waiting for the market to crash. Like I want it to happen so I can buy a house. I feel like the strategy of the market is hot. Houses are going for a lot right now. Yeah. I'm going to sell the place that I live. Yeah to then not have a place to live, yeah. to then rent and just waste the money. It's not though. I have a lot of equity in my house. So if I take that money and put it into something else, it'll return more than I'm losing on rent. Because we talked about this the other day, the amount of equity going into the house actually isn't that much. Like the amount of equity going into my house is like $1,700 a month after everything's said and done, like the amount of going into the house. So look, the equity is like, no one knows what equity is. No. And I just, I feel like going into an apartment, like I feel like this is a, a thing you're going to regret. If I do, I'll just buy another house. Yeah, but then the market's really high. So that's not going to be the end of the world. I just don't feel like buying a house right now. It's just money. Yeah. Fun coupons. Dude. More money and a positive attitude yeah. can yeah. fix any problem. I think I'll be all right. I don't know. I've never, I've never lived in town. I've never lived in an apartment. There's a lot of news going here. First time for everything. So the new apartment's like 25 minutes away, a, l- a little bit further. It's just different direction. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes from here. I have a feeling we're going to stop hanging out because right now, no, I'll still, I don't go to your house anyways. Joe, I don't want to freak you out, but I think I'm your best friend. Debatable. Because you hang I think out. I'm your best friend. Debatable. Okay. 
Uh, no, it's, it's the same distance and we don't hang out at your house anyway. So I'll be there. We're good. We're, I'm worried that our friendship is going to dwindle because you're going to be downtown and ain't nobody want to go down. It's, it's, Everyone it's, wants to go downtown. it's different if like every, like, like, oh, there's Johnny and Susie and Karen and stuff. And they all live in the same building or a building over and we can walk and go get, go get tapas and get rooftop brunch and stuff. But when you just live in a high rise by yourself, downtown, I'll, I'll away, out there. away from every, no, and I have not. friends that live out there right now. You're going to meet people. Maybe. Nah. Yeah, big meat people. You're gonna go to Joe's gonna be like at the at the the, the bar at the happy hour, just kinda sitting like I gotta drink. do it now. I don't wanna be doing that when I'm like fifty. I'm gonna be like the fifty year old guy like sitting at happy hour, so do you think you go you do you think you'd be able to go meet new male friends? Like if you move to a new if you move let's say downtown, if this is a new area, how would you go meet <sighs> new male friends? I think you yeah, is for that, me, for me, it's a car scene. How do you approach? It's definitely like I've made new friends in the car world just from not even with YouTube, just going to car. I think you got you to find a hobby, like go play basketball at the local gym or something. I don't know. You, you meet people like with interests. I don't think as a dude, you're going to like a restaurant and like walking up to a random guy and be like, want to be friends. But I think you go to like the Bumble gun B range or something Bumble, and find some guy over there. Bumble BFF. What's that? You know what Bumble is? No. I know you know what Bumble yeah, okay. is, Joe. Yeah. Um, Joe's swiping. Uh, there's Bumble BFF. You, yeah. it's literally you're you're matching people you want to be friends with, and you just be friends. That's weird. Why? I don't know. I don't like meeting people on the internet. It's a weird concept to me. I think I, I think way back in the day, even, even when I was like in high, like even when Tinder was all the rage, I think I maybe went on one Tinder date my entire life. You never go on Tinder dates. Tinder's where the nasty girls go. I'm just saying this is before Bumble. I'm just saying I think I've only <laughs> ever met like one internet person in in person. Me? No, like a, like just a random stranger that I was like, oh, like we chatted and then like grabbed a drink or something. I'm not a big like. I don't think I want to meet people on the internet. You're a person on the internet. Yeah, but I wouldn't meet that, someone else from the that's internet. That's like people. You know how everyone says like, oh, I don't want to meet, what, I'm, I'm, I'm just using wife, but like, I don't want to yeah. meet my wife at a club or a bar. You never want to meet whatever bar. But I'm like, you're at the bar. Yeah, but like, you're just a person. You're like, if like you, you to someone else, you'd be like, oh no, I'm like normal. I'm not like a random clubber guy. What if there's another you, a, a lady at the bar? Who cares if they're at the bar? I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You meet your wife at a bar. Maybe not a club. Don't want to meet her at the strip club. You can probably see that. If, if well, it, I mean, you could. What if she's working and then you guys fall in love? Anyways, anyway, <laughs> anyways. Let me ask you this: with yeah. with, with your new apartment, are you going to in integrate any sort of new rules and regulations for your house? Such as, a lot of times when I go to people's brand new homes or even yep. not new homes, some people have the rule of take your shoes off before no, you come to this house. I don't care. W what do you think of? I, I I it's it actually. It's this weird because it shouldn't affect me. It bothers me when I go to well, someone's house and someone is like, can you take your shoes off? Because I think I'm like, I'm a grown ass man. Yeah, I was gonna say as a kid, when I was a little kid, kid sure. then I'm like, okay, because maybe I have mud on my shoes and stuff. But like as an adult, I'm not gonna walk mud through your house. And if I do, I'm gonna clean it up. Like I, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, I would never ask somebody to take their shoes off in my house. Even contra I have contractors come to my house. Like, do I need to put the booties on? Like, I don't give a shit, dude. There's dirt everywhere anyways. Like, I think it's even just weirder to like be an adult going to, to someone else's home and just walking around in your socks and your probably dressed up attire, normal attire. Yeah, just socks. Yeah, it's not like you're going over to like watch a movie and kick my shoes off. It's like- I don't even like, I don't like being in socks. So I go bare feet or shoes. There's no in between. I don't just walk around with socks on. That's a different your, thing, but- Your feet get cold. Nah. I feel grippy. Socks, I don't have any grip. I've had to run. Can't run. People think that like when I wear my shoes, I'll wear it like on my rugs and my carpet yeah. and stuff like that. People like sometimes they like lose their mind. I do, I will say, after I had to replace a bunch of carpet, maybe it's because carpet's expensive. I never knew how expensive. Now, all of a sudden, that I had to re-carpet a room, I understand why my mom would always yell at me about, like, wearing my shoes on the carpet, because I'm like, that shit, not cheap. Why, why when people are so against wearing shoes inside, but their animal can just walk inside? I think if you have an animal, you're not. Because they don't have any shoes to take be, off. Yeah, it'd be wild. No, I'm just saying. It'd be wild if someone's like, take your shoes off, but I have six dogs. I feel like the people who want you to take your shoes off like have no dogs, no kids. They want the You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I went to TJ Hunt's house. Yeah. He told he's, li off. he's lived there for well over a year. So it's not like the, yeah. we just got this. Has two or three big golden retrievers. Mm -hmm. I had to take my shoes off. He asked you to? Yep. Did you ask why? I think he said it's his, 
his girlfriend really wants people to take their shoes off, so he takes his shoes off. But why? And it's crazy. It's I would like, ask why. And, like, why and it's all hard why? wood and stuff. There's yeah. not like, I'm not walking in a carpet. Well, maybe I mean, I mean, I, trust me, I respect everyone. It's not like I'm like, fuck you, I'm out, dude. I'm wearing my yeah. shoes. But it's, I just feel weird as an adult being told to take my shoes off. Maybe TJ can't afford to have a cleaning lady. Dude, he's got like six Roombas, man. I, I know. Oh, he's also rich as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That might, that might he can help too. Yeah, but he yeah, I don't know. That's weird. I see if, if I had to clean my own house, maybe I'm thinking about it. But like, if I have a cleaning lady, I really don't care if you get mud on my floors. It would offend me if someone came into my house and took their shoes off because they thought they that to, as like they don't want to mess up my floors. I'd say put your shoes. Back I will on. say I take my shoes off. If, if you don't say anything, I probably take my shoes off, especially before I go on carpet. Like if I go to a new house and there's carpet, I'm gonna take my shoes off. I remember you asking. I think I went over to David and Julia's house yeah. when we first went uh, when they first moved in, and we were we were. Uh, like I was like dressed up going over there and I like took my shoe. I had to take my shoes off while I'm wearing like a tucked in button down and stuff. And that was just strange. Max, you told me we had some banger topics. This, this is, is, this is one of them. This is real. Yeah, no, I know. This is real stuff. I'm just waiting to, there's no way this is what's written down on that paper. No. What does that say? What does this say right here? Wow. What does that say? Read it. No shoes in house question mark. No shoes in house. People you're not, like you're real to 100 episodes too. This is it. People this like real. I mean, what do you want to talk about? Astro astrophysiology. Is yeah, that even 100%. a word? No. When, when you and I, when you, David and I sat down, we talked about random stuff and I think people yeah. really liked it. Okay. One, of the, one of the things we talked about is another random thing is, you know, I, as a man in the middle of the night, sit down and pee. Nothing Wild. wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You also cross your legs like a little girl. So <laughs> if there's nothing, we wrong, haven't talked about that on the podcast you, so yet. You but. just, you lift up and then you sit, bro. This Everything's is, squinched. It's comfortable. It's not comfortable. When you're working with a millimeter Peter, dude, you don't have to worry okay. about any of that. Anyways. Let me ask you this. Yeah. When you go to the bathroom in a public place. I don't. And you have to drop the kids off at school. I don't. Sometimes you have to. Nah. D there's, there's I, no. I can promise you right now, dude. No. Okay. Let's say it's an emergency. Mm -mm. Do you put toilet paper on the seat or do you bare cheek it? No, I go bare cheeks, but I'm not even fucking with you. Like I can tell you in 28 years of life, I don't think I've ever shit in a public bathroom. Impossible. There might've been like one time. Have you ever gone to like I hibachi and hand. then had to go walk around the no, mall? I got an iron stomach. Hibachi, good. you got to go home right after I'm hibachi. Good. I can eat Chipotle all day. I'm, I'm iron stomach, but no, I'm very anti, like I'm not a very, I'm not going to say I'm not clean, but like germs and stuff don't freak me out. I'm not like the. Do you think, do you think you don't stress about the ass germs because you can't see back there? Maybe, I guess. I don't know. I'm very like, if I drop some on the floor, I'll still eat it. Or like if Cinna like. Well, five seconds. Yeah. But like if sent like the other night, like Cinna like licked a piece of pineapple and I was like, I'm still going to eat that. Like I don't really. It's fine. <laughs> your dog licked a piece of fruit and you yeah, ate it? Yeah. That's kind of weird. I'm just like, I feel like. Do you my, make out with your dog my, too? Um, yeah. I feel like my immune system is good because of this. That's why I don't get sick a whole lot. Mm. In taking germs. Okay. I'm not, I'm like, I don't like hand, like people that get off an airplane and like everyone gets hand sanitizer. I'm like, I don't, I don't do that. Well, people are probably worried that they're going to die if something dramatic happens. Maybe. Speaking of death, Joe. Yes. Last, the other night. Yeah. I'm a big Shark Tank fan. Okay. okay. Big Shark Tank guy. And the most recent episode of Shark Tank, there was a pitch for someone who was selling rocks. Okay. Rocks. But the yeah. rocks are... You send them, here's, here's the thing. I'm the rock company, okay? You, someone you love, whatever. I mean, you're a rock company. I'm a rock company. I sell the rocks. It'll okay. make sense in so a second. A quarry. Quarry, quarry. Qu yes. Quarry. No, quarry. Yeah. I'm a rock person, okay. okay? Not Dwayne Johnson. You, someone you love passes away, RIP. Yeah. They want to get cremated. Mm -hmm. They get cremated. You send the cremation ashes to me, and I turn them into pebbles, like stones. So instead of you having these ashes of, I don't know what to do with these ashes, put them in an urn or something. I don't know what to do with them. You can have rocks that you can like, you could put outside or something. No. What do you think about that? No, I don't want to be rocks, but you get like, I'm, I'm pissed if I turn into like rocks. one person turns into like 20 rocks. Great. Now what? I mean, like a, honestly, like a fish tank, I guess get shit on by fish the rest of my <laughs> life. If there's you, not, I don't, there's no reason I want to be a rock. Yeah, but it's better than, what are you gonna do with ashes? No, the cool thing I saw, I don't know how expensive this is, but I saw this way cooler than a rock. They take your body mm -hmm. and they put it in this thing, like a capsule with a seed and they plant it in the ground. It turns into a tree and the tree feeds off of your like decomposing body. So you're technically a tree. Does the first root stem out of your penis? <laughs> it might. 
I like I that put plan the seed better. in my wiener because I'm like trees live forever. Now the only issue you have there is like you think trees live forever? I mean like hundreds of years depending on the type that's not of tree. forever, but okay. Well, I'm just saying long enough. I think it'd be cool for like your loved ones to like see that tree grow and like go talk to the tree or whatever. You know? They would talk to the tree. Maybe I think it'd be weird with the rocks because like what if so like what if you come over and then or like what if I'm like hey Joe can you like go let dude in or something and then you're like hey uh like you didn't leave the garage open and be like. Oh, that, that, that's fine. There's actually um, just go in the front and there's a key under my mom. I, I, I mean, uh, the, the, the rock at the that's, side. That's Sorry. the issue with the tree thing too is like, it's good right now, but like 50 years from now, they sell the piece of land. It gets developed. Next thing you know, like they cut grandma down and like put a house on top of, you know, it's like, I don't know, but I'm also, I don't want to be ashes. I'm just, I, I definitely don't want to do that. What like are you just sitting on a mantle? I think ashes are cool if you go spread them somewhere. I don't think you should just hold on to ashes for your whole life. What do you Kinda want healthy. to have? What do you want to happen when you die? If I'll you ever die be, with, with technology, who knows? Yeah. I mean, modern science, I could definitely be like 140, 150. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'll be dead. So I guess I don't really care. Yeah. But like, do you, do it, some people want to be like some people in my family where, where they're uh, buried in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Like they want to be like, I want to, I want to be next to the, the, like my, my husband, my I wife. I definitely don't want to go in a cemetery or cemetery. And what? the off chance that all the religion <laughs> stuff is I thought like, you were going to say the off chance that I die. No, but. <laughs> And the off chance that all the religion stuff is true and everything's right. <sighs> Hot take. And I'm stuck in that cemetery with a bunch of random people and potentially someone that I really didn't like that much, but you're still going to stick me next what to What would them. that have to do with you being in a... I'm just saying, in some crazy form, like if there is some like afterworld and you have to stay in where you're... I don't know. But Assu if I'm wrong, okay, assuming I'd rather be stuck in a forest than stuck in a cemetery. Joe, that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean it doesn't make any sense? If, you, Wait, if, if you're, you're, you're basing your sense off of... No, 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 okay. no. You're, right. you're saying you're like doing this if, if the afterlife exists yeah. kind of thing. Why would it matter if you're, if you're under? So, so, okay, okay. So what if, if you can't leave your body? So if the afterlife is real, how, how should you just pass? You should just be like, when I die, lay me open in the room and just leave me no, there. Just go spread my ashes around in a couple of places. I'll haunt multiple people at the same time. So you don't want to be buried? I mean, like I said, I'll be dead. I, I just, I don't really care. Do you think like... For, I, I would want to do whatever's the cheapest. Cremation, 100%. Yeah. What if really the, expensive. Wait, you're going to be cheap when, you're, when you die? You still want to be cheap? You're still like, <laughs> I can't spend any money. Well, I don't want the other person to take a burden. Well, I guess they get all my you're money. You're probably going to leave millions of dollars. They can spend like 10 grand on a headstone. You'd be all right. What if they're like, damn, Max is dead. Now I can go buy probably. yachts. Taylor's going to be buying yachts and shit left and right. Taylor, Taylor. She's a lot younger than you. I think Taylor said that she wants to like Romeo and Juliet if I die. Y'all have known each other for like a year. We're in love. That's wild. F 16 months. 16 months like two days ago. I know. I know. Hmm. Where would you be spread with ashes? Probably like places I want to be. What, no, what dude, Colorado. Take me up to like a ski slope. But like in the summer, don't put me on snow. I don't. What know. if the person doing cremation like did the cremation and then they, and then they got all the ashes and then they tripped on a, a thing on the floor. So all the ashes go somewhere. And they're like, Oh shit. And they're like, Oh crap. There's someone's coming. So they just burn a bunch of wood and then they get ashes and they give it to you. You have I mean, no guess, idea. Yeah, you have no clue. I mean, you don't even know if they clean that thing. It could be like your significant others ashes, ashes mixed with like 10 other people. Like you don't have to clean cleaning that thing out every day. I think it's the thought, but now I'm like, yeah. is it actually, is it actually you? I don't love you? that. Yeah. I don't think I want to be buried in a cemetery, but I don't love the ashes thing either. Hmm. What do you think about I like the, the tree thing? I think I'm going to go the tree route. <laughs> the tree route might be the best option. Dude, you'd be the tallest tree in the forest. Maybe. You'd be Red like one of those did. trees like overseas that's like historically like the world's large tallest tree. That's called a redwood and it's not overseas it's in California. Mm. I've got a redwood right now. What, what about your thoughts on organ donors? Some people are anti-organ donors. So if you didn't know, if you're listening from out... I don't know if this is only in America, but on your license, I'm not an organ donor. Hold on. So, so you decide, <laughs> do you, when you pass, do you want your organs? You could say harvested, but do you want your organs to be donated? So they mm -hmm. can cut you open and like take your organs and apply it to someone who would need your organs. That's the idea behind it. Yeah. But you can choose yes or no. Why do you choose? No, you said you're dead. You don't care, but you don't want people taking your organs. So I was told, at a young age. Oh, here this is go. one of those, like my grandma, I, there was a lot of stuff my grandma told me that wasn't accurate. Like I was told it was illegal to drive without shoes on. And until very recently, I thought that was a lie. I'd ask a cop and he was like, no, I was like, okay. <laughs> Cause I had my shoes on. I'm like, oh shit. Uh, never eat potato skins. That was another one. My grandma hit me with. I never you ate get a to the point. Anyway, Joe. your grandma's point being, I don't know. If 
my grandma, what were we talking about? Holy shit. Joe's drunk. Organ oh, donor. Organ donor. Yes. My grandma told me that if I was an organ donor, that there's a chance if I was ever critically injured in an accident or whatever, that there's a better chance they let you die than bring you back. I don't know if there's any validity to that, but apparently like if you are an organ donor and they need a couple organs, like maybe they don't try too hard to keep you alive. That's probably complete BS because everything else she told me was complete BS too. But that's why when I was 16 and I got my driver's license, they asked a question. I was like, nah. I She's never like, updated you're it. like, my whole life is a lie. I live, I live my life by Pretty that. Much, you came yeah. first or last. I mean, it makes sense. And especially because I think I have like the rare blood type already. I think like my organs are kind of like. No, the, I have the I have the O negative that anyone can get mine, but no one can get. See, if you got an accident and they were like, oh, he could make it. But also we get like a lot of good organs out of this. If he doesn't make it, they're just going to look the other way. You're done. So maybe. He, so there's someone out there that needs your organ. And when you pass. I should probably no update one, it. I'll, I need to update it. It was just, that's why I'm not at the moment. Your grandma made you not. Because when I was 16, I said no. And I just never updated it. Okay. But my ID doesn't have a little heart. I don't know if this is getting too deep in the death thing, but what do you think happens after you die? Oh, now, dude, I'm not, I'm not like I, my realistic no, answer, yeah, I'm not talking about like, I, I'm, I'm not even trying to get into religion about mm-hmm. this. I'm literally, okay. No, right, right, I'll, right, I'll right, get into religion. Ready, Joe? It. Yeah. You're dead. What happens? Immediately. And by the way, I, what happened to you since I did that? You have a very long, painful death. Yeah. You're, you're, you're struggling for a long time. All right. This is going to be a little controversial here. I, at the moment, I don't think anything happens. You don't remember what happened before you're born. I don't think you remember what happens after you die. I think it's just blackness and that's it. Done. Game over. I also am very, I'm going to get into religion topic here for a second. Okay. I don't think it's coincidental that every religion no matter how crazy it is, ends up falling back on what happens when you die. Almost every religion, if not all of them, all are setting a foundation to set you up for success when you die. Because no one knows what happens. That's what I'm saying. And it's the easiest thing to sell people because everyone's scared to death. The easiest thing to sell people is if you do X, Y, and Z, you're going to have a great afterlife. That's what they all are kind of selling you. Because I mean, think there was no money and stuff back then, right? How do you get a mob of people to do what you kind of want them to do and like follow the rules somewhat? promise them some awesome afterlife thing and they're gonna be like okay i don't think it's coincidental that's why i'm kind of like not very religious because they all are kind of pointing in the same direction which i get it to control the masses religion's an excellent tool that sounds really bad i'm i'm a little religious anyways that's why i'm like i don't really buy into all that like i i just kind of think like what do you remember before you're born i would almost venture into like reincarnation before i venture into an afterlife like i believe that more than i believe there's some afterlife I, f- but I feel like I kind of, I kind of vibe with reincarnation because I, f- if you come back as like something cool, if you come back as like a cricket, you would come back as a, a mosquito that would, that's what I'm saying. That would c- suck. I'm just kidding. You would come back as a giraffe. You think in the reincarnation line, you have to come back as another human or you think there's a chance you come back as like some random. I shit? think in the reincarnation line, you get to the front of the line and there's a giant wheel and it you, asks s- you, oh. you spin it and it's just like giraffe, hippo, piece of grass. Cal. A piece of grass would suck. <laughs> oh, shit. It, it, every, twice a week, you just get chopped in half and you yeah. grow again and get chopped in half. That's, yeah, I, I do follow that. I mean, I'm, I'm a big, like, evolution makes a lot of sense to me. Uh-huh. But then you get to the beginning of evolution. It's like, what happened there? I don't know. So maybe there is something bigger than us. I have no clue. I'm not going to say there's not. But, but on the death front, at the moment, now as you get older and death becomes more imminent, I think you get more scared. And then that's why if you look at age and religion, most people get more religious when they're older because they're closer to death. Because as you're getting closer to death, you really want to like reassure yourself that something's going to happen. This is not going to suck. I'm not going to be scared of this. So you get into religion. Hmm. The, the, the strings aren't hard to follow here, dude. The last thing I'll say on death is, wow, I just blanked out. Yeah, see? Oh, okay. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. Sorry, this shot's... Can we take another one? That was strong. You want to do that one? Yeah. Okay. It's going to get wild. We're going to get margaritas after We're this. getting wild. So, so, I, I heard somewhere, and yeah. this really put it into perspective. I, you've always heard, like, the older you get, like, the more you kind of, like, conceptualize time, right? Yeah. Like, the older you get, the realize how much less time you have when you're a kid, you think you're going to live forever yeah. kind of thing. So, you're, you're how old? You're about to be... Huh? I'm be 29 and, like... Four months. Okay, so let's just say you have, at best, 55 years left to live. I'm pretty tall. I don't think that's like the dog thing where it like is. bigger. 
tall you're, people. Yeah, hard. Skin yeah, but you're not. You're not. Harder. You're not like one of the like the no, eight and a half feet tall. people. I know, but in general, I I'm like I would love to live to be ninety, but like realistically, I'm I'm say seventy five is probably about my limit. I mean, I I think for for dudes between seventy eighty, I think for ladies, which they're historically yeah. they live longer, uh, like eighty to ninety. Okay. Anyways. Continue. Anyway, um, so when you think, let's just say fifty years for whatever. Right. Dude. Come on, in years. Arriba, abajo, el centro, el drinko. Mm. I can do better. Okay. Let's say you have 50 years left to live. That sounds like a long time. I'm going to phrase this in a way that everyone listening, when you hear this, it's going to make 50 years sound a whole lot shorter. Yeah. Instead of thinking I have 50 years left to live, think of it like the seasons. So summer's about to come up. You only have 50 summers left of your life. So after the summer, you're like 49 summers. That happens once a year. That makes it That's seem a lot. Metric. No, no, what no. Because, it makes it seem different. Because, one year, one summer, it's the because same Because years, but then you're like, oh, summer, like 40, because you only have 50. How about like decades? You have five decades. That sounds shorter. No. Okay. Anyway, Joe, no matter what, whatever happens when you die, yeah. you will not be remembered because legacy doesn't exist like you said. We keep going into this, but yeah. No, no, it, it has a... Um, okay, it's, all right, yeah. My topics tie in, Joe. Do you think They when tie in. Die and send me your body, I'll turn you to Rocks guy dies. Anyone's going to remember that he was the die and turn you into Rocks guy? Who knows, dude? Probably not. But something that will continue... Yeah. Social media. Yes. Because, because you know, everyone wants to get this big social media following, but when you die, because it's going to happen... No, like in, in, in a hundred years, no one, no one that, you know, will be alive. What happens to social media? I mean, there's been influencers that have died. Do I their accounts just stay frozen forever. Or do they like give the login to like next of kin? Like who gets the, I am actually 100% serious. When I say this, if I die, I would want Taylor or you to upload a video saying max died, not clickbait. No, but from like a company. And if it's not a one out of 10, I'd be pissed. Like if you die. Mm hmm does YouTube give your mom your login? Like how does well, the computer just has it logged in? I'm just, if I can't get into that computer, I think that's called having a will. It's a legacy contact in Apple. You can set up like who gets your info. If I did. If I die, I don't want anybody to get my fucking Apple. My phone's done. Throw it away. No one get in there. Should be a bunch of butts and stuff. Some on your crazy shit. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, with social media, I'm like, I don't know if you can, well, I don't know what happens when you, yeah, that is a good, Dude, also, social media is not even sustainable at the current rate, but that's a whole different Why? argument. I mean, it's getting, it's, it's getting wild. There's like new apps everywhere. It's changing. Our attention spans, we're literally getting trained to go smaller and smaller, right? We went from YouTube. Now we're on TikTok. Now we have Instagram Reels. Like Instagram's not even a photo website at this point. It's just freaking Reels. But you get into a rhythm, you'll start scrolling. I'm not even, I don't even know I'm scrolling. I'll be driving and I'm just scrolling, listening to audio. It's like you're, you're doing it out of. Yeah, but I think apps, memory. I think apps are getting better though, because like. No. When I look at Instagram, what's the number one thing on Instagram that you're looking at? Would you say stories? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't you ever think back when it was just photos and you're like, wow, that was wild, it's just photos. And now you're like, wow, that would be so lame if it's just but photos. But I think you thought more about it. I think it's, it's dumbing us down. It used to be you would scroll through and find a photo you liked or whatever. You get that little quick hit of dopamine and someone likes your, your post and you keep going. Now it's just nonstop. You have one second to catch their attention or they're just going to keep swiping. So now we're all fighting over everyone's like one second attention span. And then you're training these little kids that have grown up with this, that everything in life is going to be this fast pace and they don't have to focus on anything. It's going to become an issue. Like the next, not under us, but like a couple generations under us is fucked. Those dang our, The generation gonna... under us is stupid. <laughs> no, I'm not even messing with you. Well, it's, it's, I, I think, I think every generation, like I'm sure your, our parents yeah. probably look at, our way of living and our way of making income and is like, you guys don't have to work like I had to work, right? And I'm even thinking that now when I see social social media kids that have been on there for a year or two making all this money and I'm like, you didn't have to put in the effort like I did That's to be wild. successful. It's the same thing. Like, I, I think it's, everything is getting faster. I think people are getting used to like money fast. Yeah. Like, like I, I need money, money even fast. In, so even in like the software world, they're having issues now. Like there's, there's a big article on LinkedIn. They're having issues now with people. They're not learning how to do the actual skills because everything's done for them. So they're hiring web developers that come out of college and then they can't figure out how to set up their emails. 
you have these like older guys that are pissed off because they're hiring people at 150 grand and then they need help setting up their email address because they can't figure out how to do like an STMP server or whatever. Same for like people on social media. It's like, I bet most of the kids now, if I said like, make me a custom title sequence in Premiere, they, they just use presets. They don't know how to make any of like animated text or whatever. Like they're losing all of that. They're just relying on technology so heavy. And then if that goes away, they're fucked. They're like, I can't do the title sequence, but how about a, how about a renegade? Pretty much. It's like they're not learning the underlying skills. They're just doing it and it works for now. But like what happens when that turns off or like I would say the next generation is really fucked if they like like if they like turned off the Internet tomorrow, we'd be all right. Mm -hmm. But like the kids that are 14, 15 right now, like they won't make it. I'm confident in that. I think it just goes to show that every generation thinks the generation under them is like lazy and dumb. And they are. I think we're lazy and dumb compared to our parents and our we're not lazy them compared to kids that are like 15 right now. I mean, you're, I mean, just like you were saying, like your, your dad does a lot of real estate investments Yeah. and you're like, Max, dude, if you put in the like a hundred to $300,000, like in a, in a, in eight months or a year, like I can make you like, or on a hundred grand, I can make you a 30% return, which is crazy. $30,000. And in my head, I'm like, damn, a year to make $30,000. That's really slow. And I remember when I said that one time, your dad, your dad was like, <laughs> like <laughs> he's like, what the fuck, Max? I mean, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time. Social media is a, a wild thing right now. What do you think about short form content? I hate it. I really do. Not because I'm like, like, no, it's taking away from long form. That's why I hate it. Like I hate it because what I enjoy doing is like the cinematic side of it. And that doesn't exist in the short form. Like I can't be cinematic in six seconds. It's not possible. I mean, you can post like one of those little like color grade, not color graded things, but like, there's no way to make like a cinematic thing in, in six seconds. You can ask your mom. I was cinematic in six seconds. What do you think about the blue check mark that everyone can buy now? And now, now be nice because Taylor bought one, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she's a notable figure. She was Miss Texas. She deserved a blue check mark. She I, deserved it. As someone that, honestly, yeah, she did. I'm surprised she didn't get one being Miss Texas because, like, most, like, if you're on like a pro sports team, yeah, like, there's she like had, linebackers she had a with like 30 and stuff? followers that used to be verified. If someone is confusing you for someone else, it comes in handy. So, like, even for me, I don't have Joe knows best. I have like Joe knows dot best or whatever. And I've had other people do like giveaways with fake accounts that are me. So I'm like, it would probably be useful for me to like verify it. If I was making content, if I was back to making content, doing giveaways and stuff like that, I can see it hundred percent. But for the kids that like, don't have a big social media, don't do anything with their Instagram. Like, I don't know why you're paying $14. Or something, you know, I think at that point, it's just a look at me thing. I think it's the thing. If, if everyone's verified, no one's verified. I mean, I appreciate they are verified, right? Like if a girl reached out to you on Instagram and she's verified, at least you know she's who she says she is. Because you can't get verified unless you have an ID, a photo ID that proves that you're who you are. So yeah, at but, least but it's not a fake account. Like that's least, not why they're doing it though. Because no, they're doing you, it because they the blue, think, yeah. the blue check because it adds clout right. and credibility. For me, the only reason I would do it is if I started making content again and I started doing like giveaways and hosting stuff and all that kind of stuff, then I'm like, it would, it would come in handy because I, there's fake people out there. I bought uh, the verification on Twitter, sorry, Titter. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that is because I'm verified on every other platform, yeah. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I don't even know you could get verified on some of these. I'm verified on all of them. And I was just like triggered. I'm like, I should be verified on t Twitter because I have a lot of followers. I'm verified on everything. I'm a personality. Yeah. I deserve it. And I bought that. But I don't think if I was never verified on anything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy verification because it bothered. Like when I got the verified, as, as dumb as it is, I was very proud of it. I was like, this is a big deal. It means you're like, it sounds bad, but uh, no, because I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say it, it was a big deal because it like, oh, it puts you in this category, but it just it does or did. Now it doesn't. It did, but now they should add another badge. They like should a OG verified badge. I think then, if you're actually verified, you get gold verified. If you're just verified, you get blue verified. But that's what the verification was. It was just saying this is who it says it is. And I'm like, you're big enough that you need verification. Someone can make a fake Max shooting Twitter and yeah. do a, a fake Sour Strips giveaway and fuck with people. So for you, it makes sense. But for like Cindy, who has an OnlyFans with two people watching it and no one's looking at her shit, she doesn't need the blue check mark. How much money did you say Instagram made? Or Facebook? Meta? Oh shit. It was like 600 million a month or something extra. I think, I don't, don't quote me on that, but I think it was, I think it was 600 million. I think it was 14.99 times 60 million or something 60 like that. million people got the verified so. badge it was something wild yeah it was something like that do you think they're like why didn't we do this before yeah, monthly too like 600 million even if half those people cancel like 300 million a month extra on, on whatever else he had going 
Okay. Spe- yeah. Speaking of Instagram, a while ago we did interview on my YouTube channel and you said that, I, I, I mean, it's kind of like a joke, I feel like, but you were like, I asked if liking another person's photos, a, a, an attractive person of the opposite sex while you're in a relationship, is that cheating? You said no, but you said I would don't want my girlfriend to do it and I can do but I can do it. I was being sarcastic. Right, right. I, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. But what, what do you think about people who like like other people's like uh, like hot girl photos someone of your relationship? Someone you know. I think if it's someone you know, it's all good. That's but, what I'm saying. But well, it depends on the photo though too. But, but here's like, the thing. I've never, I didn't know you can like, you know, you can go into like the, uh, it used to be like you go in a community tab, but I'm always like, how do people know what you like? Because if they follow you, like, like I'm sure like Taylor's really into your shit. So your name will be the first one that pops up because it shows like your, your closest friends likes first on a, on a post. So like if me and you both follow Paris Hilton and you liked her photo, but she has 800,000 likes, you're, it'll say 800,000 and max tuning. Like it'll say that top person. So it's the easy way. Otherwise, she's just going to click on the likes and type in max and see what comes up. And you have two X's. So like you're fucked. I don't really. Joe's like, a pretty common name. So like you just, I, there's a couple of Joe's that pop up. For I actually max. get, I get yelled at sometimes by people that I know because they're like, Max, you never like my photos. I'm not like a, uh, I don't. Yeah. I just look. I'm not a big, I'm not a big interacting with social But then media it triggers me because whenever you have like poor engagement, but I'm like, maybe, maybe I just have a whole bunch of people like you that are yeah. like me that they're looking, they're acknowledging, they're stopping. Look, I think if my significant other is liking shirtless pics of dudes that I don't know and she doesn't know, I have an issue with it. But I think if she likes Christian's post about some new thing in Alphalete, like I'm not going to be like, oh my God. Yeah. I think it depends on who it is. Like as a dude, I can't be liking like some OnlyFans chick that no one knows. I feel like with Instagram, there's a lot. I feel like social media has taken. Um, I mean, it, it's like a very uh, in in society thing. A long time ago, many many years, I would always like kind of get in arguments about like because you did or didn't do do something on social media, and I was like, that's like another. Who cares? Like I'm I'm in, I'm in the real world. Who cares what I did? What if I liked or whatever, but now social media is a big deal. It's like, if you like someone else's photo, people are getting in arguments in the relationship from double tapping a photo. I I got that for a long time. I've been very good at like, I don't, I don't post on Instagram anyways, but like no one knows shit about my personal life on, on Instagram. I don't post anything. How, how, when you meet someone, how much interaction before you follow them? Or is it, if you meet someone, you follow them? No. Cause I don't follow everyone that I know, Mm -hmm. but I'm like, if we're friends, I follow you. Unless you're like, what's your IG and like, show me yours. I'm not, I'm not even going to look it up. I don't care. You don't care? No. You don't have like an interaction threshold of. Unless oh. you're like a cool dude. I mean, I meet you at a car show and you're like, oh, I post photos of Lamborghinis all day. Like, all right, I'll follow you. But I don't, I'm not like meeting some random person in the gym. Like, all right, let me follow you real quick. Even though everyone in the fucking gym has like their IG handle tattooed on their neck. But <laughs> for the most part, like I ain't following you. The opposite of the follow is the unfollow. Right. Yeah. And. Something that I get uh, kind of uh, confused about is there's a lot of people that I follow and I'm not going to say who they are yeah. because I'm friends with them or I'm like been known them for a long time. So it's like, okay, we follow each other on yeah. social media, but a lot of times they post things that I'm like, I don't want to see this. I have no interest in seeing this. It bothers me when I see this. So yeah. I, I mute them. I'm going to clear this up real quick. Okay. So Max followed females that used to be good girls and now they're only fans thoughts and now max is scrolling through on an airplane and there's just titties all over his feet and he's like i can't have this happening anymore I, so he's i'm, I'm, sorry, I'm just translating for I, the i'm audience. gonna lean yeah. into that and yes yeah, yeah. no it happens to me too when i'm I, like on an airplane i'm scrolling and i have to like be careful of what i'm looking at i'm like i, I gotta no, it, bro you. it's it's like there's and again this isn't like an attack on anyone but like i'll be going through my stories just looking at people's stories yeah. and it's sometimes but mainly girls yeah. that they'll just, Titties. And, and I'm just like, I don't want to see, like, yeah. I don't want to see this. It's not like I'm like, Oh, worried. Like Taylor's going to see it. It's more like, it's just weird to, that's like the main focus of what you're doing. And I'm like, I don't want to see this. Yep. I don't have no any interest, but, but I'm like, I can't unfollow you because then you're going to get upset because what I've learned is people for some reason, I don't know if there's an app or something, but people know the moment you unfollow them, and I have no idea how. I've never understood that either, but yes, they do. Because I unfollow people, and they're like, why'd you unfollow me? And I'm like, I've, oh, fuck, you know I unfollow you. There's an app that tells them. That's weird. That's yeah. weird to monitor who, who unfollows you or whatever. Which, this is a, a little bit different topic. We talked about this before. I was at, I think it was at Target. Turn the corner, girl in like a bikini in, inside a Target, dancing, friends filming. I turn the corner, she like giggles and runs off. They're like, oh my God, ha ha, they're all embarrassed and stuff. Mm-hmm. Why is it these girls are embarrassed 
They're dancing in Target butt ass naked. They're embarrassed if a they were real naked? life person, and she's wearing like a skirt and stuff. It was like a, yeah, anyway. I walk around the corner and they're all embarrassed and stuff. Oh my God. But you're posting this in front of millions of people on the internet. It's a wild concept to me that it's like, if someone in real life sees you dancing in public, you're embarrassed to be dancing in public, but you have no problem posting you dancing in public to a million people to watch. I think, What's the difference? I think that'd be the same argument of people who produce provocative content for certain websites. But if you like asked, be like, Hey, what I pay $5 a month, yeah, but yeah, what yeah. if I just pay you $5 and you just show them to me right now? They'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My tits are worth more than $5, but a thousand dudes paying $5. Fitties. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, on to the next one. <laughs> it's really strong tequila. I know, this dude. I, I feel time. like the drinking yeah. thing is good, but it's bad because my uh -huh. brain is just like all over the place. If anyone noticed in the podcast, Joe's looking a little swollen right now. Let's do it. We are workout partners yes. never in a million years would i think that joe and i would be swole mates yeah it's time to cut though get a little get a little tubby and i i mentioned this in, in the previous video but joe has gone to the dark side yeah he is now on prescribed yeah trt yep. testosterone replacement I'm 29 therapy. dude i'm old yeah but i'm old. i'm getting to the point you, where like my natural levels are lower than what they were so at this point and i'm not competing i'm not like oh i'm gonna go compete i don't give a shit so like, what does it matter? You know how like when I do certain things yeah. and I try to justify it and you go, no bullshit. Like you're, you don't want to buy a nice watch. Yeah. Something like, yeah, I think you're, I'm lazy. I think you're not, I, I think you're wrongfully justifying needing TRT. Look, I could work my ass off, eat perfect nonstop and feel like shit at all times. Cause I'm so fucking tired and stuff or take TRT, not have to work that hard. Still look good. How long have you been on TRT? Oh, uh, shit. I don't know. A couple months? Yeah. Three months, two months. That's it? Yeah. What have you, that what have you, what was the starting weight and what was your, in the ass like eight times so far, I think. I've, yeah. What, what, what was your starting weight and what are you at now? Uh, like, pretty much maintaining. Like, take me to the journey. Like, have you, no, like, what have you noticed? Good, bad? So I think when I started, I was probably 212, kind of, kind of fat. Okay. Like, I'm not gonna say fat, but like, I, I didn't feel great. You're, sk you're skinny fat. You have no muscle. Yeah. Not, not, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. a mean way. So but you were I want to say right now I'm probably 215. Okay. Uh, a lot more energy. More. I, before I will say I, before bench 225 for one was insane for me. That's pathetic. Yeah. I hit 225 for a five by five the other day. So like a drastic difference in, in my, my chest game. Okay. Yeah. So have you noticed, like, I mean, I'm a, this is, this my is, my hair's falling out. Notice that that's happening from two, really? I think so. It's like accelerated. Hmm. Yeah, I just accepted it. It's I think fine. you look great. Thanks, dude. Yeah. You, I feel like you're going to start experiencing, like, there's no way that now you don't fully check yourself out in the mirror, like in the mornings and stuff. Bit, yeah, and, yeah. and you're like, sure. like, like, oh, look, dude, I told Max the minute that I am like fucking ripped. I'll That's never going to happen. It will happen. And I'm do you think posting you'll, all over fucking social media. Do you think you'll ever post a shirtless selfie or yeah. like, like, like a yeah, mirror yeah. pic of a physique yeah. update? Not like we're at the beach with my friends. No, it won't be a physique update, but like it'll it, me in front of like a Bugatti or something will happen. Yeah. A full Andrew Tate. How, how does, as someone who's never had uh, ass injections, how does it, how does it feel? Cause you go, I wasn't you, a big fan of needles up go, until that point. You go to a clinic. Yeah, yeah I'm doing you, it the right you, way. You do not do it yourself, no, which no, I get you can. I and stuff. Yeah, I don't want to do it myself, though. I don't want to give myself a shot. It's kind of nice. Outside of the girls, like, trying to have, like, small talk with me while they're, like, poking me in the ass. It's always weird when they're, like, touching my ass. And they're like, so what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, don't, don't. Let's not talk right now. Uh, Wait, just so people can get a visual. Is it yeah. left cheek or right cheek? Uh, they alternate. <laughs> Yeah, so I go in and the girl's like, left cheek, <laughs> right cheek. They know what they're doing too. It's like a bunch of like decent looking girls working there. Like they know what they're doing in this, this clinic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's all right. I didn't like needles up until now. Now I have no, I mean, the nice thing is like, so I do, they do like blood work every like quarter. Okay. Which I'm never really like giving blood or anything. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm just like numb to needles at this point. So it's nice. And I'm like, I know I'm healthy. The nice part about like getting blood work done like every couple months is like now I know that like cholesterol is good. Like they're like checking everything and everything's like dead on. So like I always assumed I was healthy, but now I'm like, okay, I'm healthy. That's probably a good thing to know. Cause up until I started doing this, like I didn't go to like doctor checkups like once every five years. Like I have no clue if I'm healthy or if I'm dying or. I, mean, I kind of, I was in the mindset for a long time that if you don't get 
uh, your blood work tested for illnesses, yeah. you can't have them. Does it make sense? I feel I haven't been to a dermatologist in years because I always have this underlying thought that like I have cancer, I'm going to die. A der- the dermatologist is your biggest fear yeah, to like go to? Yeah, skin cancer, yeah. Because you have moles and stuff? Yeah, I got moles. Y- you know that like melanoma and like skin cancers, it's like one of, I mean, I, I don't know, don't take this for verbatim, but it's probably like one of the easiest early detection like cancers to like I don't combat, know. right? My grandpa died of skin cancer. No, I'm not saying people don't have the extreme, no, 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 but, no, but no, I would no, say no. like it, it's something that like- I'm you, very much like, I don't want to know. Same with the dentist. That I go is to the dentist so like dumb. Once a year, but like- and until something hurts, I'm not going to the dentist. I'm not the kind of guy that's like every three months going to the dentist. Like I'm once no. a year, and if something goes wrong, then maybe I'll go. First of all, out. you should go every six months. Uh-uh. And every six months, you should go to the dermatologist. Mm-hmm. I have had brr, probably four or five moles removed. I don't want that. You don't want skin cancer, Joe. If I don't know, it's not there. But it, I mean, I, but I understand what you're saying because yeah. I never went and got my blood work done. That I, is, when I get blood work done, I'm like, oh my God, like, is my white blood cell count low? Like, is it, I'm like hypochondriac on that front. It's weird because I'm not weird against germs, but like every time I go to the doctor, I think I'm dying. Yeah. Yeah. You go to Google and you're like, my left foot fell asleep and it's like cancer. Like, yeah. I've definitely learned to never Google any sort of not a good idea result. Yeah. You know, one thing that uh, you do Google is AI. Okay. I Did you see? Well, I'll let you go first. What? There, it's happened a while back, but I just saw the article the other day. The chat GPT mm-hmm. for, I think, what, around V4 or whatever? I don't fucking know, bro. I'm uh, a nerd. It hired someone on TaskRabbit to complete a CAPTCHA for it because it. No one knows what a CAPTCHA is. Like bro. the prove you're not a robot, like the click on oh. all the pictures of cards. Because as far as, as AI has gotten, it's still very shitty at like the best OCR. So the best technology that can turn an image into letters talk to and us common people we don't so ocr it, like taking an image and converting it into text okay right it's what your pdf viewer does when you scan a pdf and then or your iphone when you take a picture of like that notepad and you can highlight text it's what it's doing okay i, I don't know what you just said but all right the best versions of that still can't crack into it. you know like the when you go to a website and it's like prove you're not a, a yeah. robot and you type in a code and even you as a human sometimes you're like what the fuck is that a y is that an l like you can't figure or out what it's like looking at or you're like it, it's it's like click all the palm trees and you're like that leaf kind of goes into exactly, the other one yeah so ChatGPT can't crack that. As good as it is, it still can't figure that out. But apparently an unlocked version of ChatGPT that had to get a task done and was allowed to use outside resources went to TaskRabbit, hired a human to finish the capture thing for it to answer the question. And apparently that person asked, this is real, you can look this article up. That person asked ChatGPT, are you a robot? Like thinking like whatever. And ChatGPT responded and said, no, I'm vision impaired. I can't see. That's why I'm hiring you to help me. And he helped. And then it cracked in and it got the answer it needed. Like the fact that ChatGPT was able to hire a human to do something for it so it could continue on its path is fucking terrifying. I feel like this whole listing humans. I feel like this whole chat GPT. There's three things that like stress me out. Chat GPT. Yeah. Open AI with all like the like horse riding a donkey surfing on the moon yeah. and it can make a photo which is crazy and, and then the third is the is it boston robotics yeah google, like well google owns them now but yeah that is the little so, dogs so that is crazy yeah. man when you wire them all together that's what i'm saying so the chat and this is this is where i'm like oh shit and this is where elon musk stepped in he was like mm. chat gpt can now run software so you can ask it, like, how would you do something? Like, how would you build a, a Pong app, for example? And it can actually not just show you how to do it, but it'll do it and then run it in its own little emulator that it can, it can handle. I don't think everyone has access to this yet, but basically ChatGPT is allowed to run its own software and it's allowed to use instances of itself. Uh-huh. So you could ask ChatGPT a question and then ChatGPT says, I need to enlist another ChatGPT to help with this question. And that one can enlist more. And technically you can branch off into these like sub ChatGPTs all working for each other. Why would it? If Chat G- GPT is so all knowing and powerful, yeah, how like what what is the threshold f- before it's like I need another Chat GPT? Well, it's like multi-threaded. So I mean, you're if, if there's Joe, ten I, things Joe, for you it can't to talk out. like this, bro. Okay, if there's ten things for Chat GPT to go do, right? Okay, it's easier for Chat GPT to spin up ten of itself to answer each of these and then respond back than it is for that one to go through and have multiple tasks going on. At the same okay, time. Joe, you might be able to explain this. It blows my mind. Yeah. When, okay, because all this is, is code, right? Someone made this. And the fact that you can ask a robot something 
and it goes, be boop, be boop. I cannot answer this. I'm going to do so. How does it do that, Joe? How does chat GPT work? I mean, what does it look, do? At the very low level, it's just trained on a huge like language index, like all of history and the internet and, and Google searches. So it's just else. taking Google. For the most part, it's answering you using a little bit of like a, a language model mixed in with the results it finds on the internet. So when you ask it, how do you do something? For the most part, it's gathering information on like for coding and stuff like Stack Overflow or YouTube or whatever it needs to do. And then it's just dribbling in like a little bit of English syntax to make it make sense. But for the most part, it's only as smart as what it can find on the internet. Was Is chat GPT essentially what search engines Google was when it came out? Like, was it just like yeah, how I mean, to make a cake? And it pulls up yeah. 30 websites, but instead of websites, chat GPT is just like, I'll just tell you the best website of the information that it's going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you that right here, how to make yeah. a cake. Pretty much. I mean, I'm not like an expert in this field, but like ChatGPT is very good at telling you how to do something and giving you very low level. So for example, if I said, how would I make a, a Pac-Man game, mm -hmm. right? It's very good at going out and finding different articles and stuff that'll help me and putting that in a, a form that I can. So is it just Googling? It's deeper than that. But yes, for the most part, it's just gathering stuff online. Where ChatGPT falls on its face is very specific stuff. So like write me a Pac-Man game in Python with an emulator, blah, 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 blah. It can't really figure that out yet. It, it's going to fail every single time. So it's, it's good at high level, like how do you do something? It's not good at actually like figuring out deep stuff, but it's getting better. And that's kind of the scary part is it's getting a lot better at that kind of stuff. Where do you see the future of this? Go? Like what is top tier? Well, I mean, I think a lot of jobs are at stake right now. I don't, you, I don't Joe, think you, software. Your, no. your job, Joe's a coder. I he, think he sits there and is like, uh, you know, um, dash less than fin, Greater than what is fin? F I N. I'm finished with the code. Nice. Yeah, that's how that works. That's what that. Yeah, every time it, I'm you, done with a line, I just fin slash fin. Yeah. Uh no. So like I just said, like Chat GPT is good at something. So we have uh GitHub Copilot, which is basically like Chat GPT, but it runs in your like ID, which is a coding. When you're writing code, you can basically just use Chat GPT right there, and then, so you don't have to go to another. So thing. you cheat pretty much. So what I'm noticing is a lot of the lower level stuff. Like if I have, for example, a function that goes through a couple lines of data and marks, you know, some as complete and some as not, let's just to-do list, the easiest version of this. Um, I could tell Google or Copilot, write a function that marks anything with a date after tomorrow complete and everything else not. And it would automatically write that function for me. Okay. But I still am not at the level where I could go, hey, Copilot, write me a whole app that does this, this, and this. It can't figure that out. So that's what I'm saying. Like the, the coding side of the job's not gone. It's the low level shit that's going away. It's the, the task rabbit level, like human stuff. Like a lot of the stuff that I pay devs for will go away. I can have AI do that. I don't think. What's an example of like a low level task that you could? I mean, something like that. Like write, write me a function that, you know, you take in X and Y and you give me out Z. Well, I, I, chat GPT could do that, but chat GPT is not writing. If you go right now and chat GPT and say, write me the next Instagram. It ain't going to, well, I, do I, it. I think another application that it can do that I literally will start using mm -hmm. is, uh, is like, Hey, when I need a repeated pattern for a bathing suit with, you know, yeah. flowers and a blue background, I would normally pay someone a couple hundred bucks to make a couple patterns with some changes. But like, I could be like, I could have those patterns in 10 different variations in 30 seconds and continue to like improve it a little bit. But like, I can have that. Like, so I will say like, like I need a camouflage pattern. Boom. It'll give something me something I use it for recently. Whenever I get around to posting it, how to make your wiener bigger. It says there's no way <laughs> I tried. Uh, no YouTube titles. If you type in like the gist of your video and say, give me a catchy title that is guaranteed to get clicks or whatever, it will use its fucking knowledge of the internet to put you together a title. real quick. I don't believe that. Do it on your next video. Tomorrow, whenever you post your next video, go in and, and say what you're doing and say you need a title and you want my it to next be a viral video. title and see what it does. No, no, no. I have the banger. My next YouTube video is Mona is moving to Bali, not mm. clickbait. Because she's moving to Bali. How would ChatGBT do better than that? Chat GPT. It I get wouldn't Russell's run that brand one, but like, up. I even thought about, if you steal this and be pissed, yeah. I even thought about doing like, I want to do a car focused YouTube video, but I want ChatGPT to tell me what to do. I'm going to go on ChatGPT and say, what should I do for my next car focus YouTube video? And whatever it spits out, I'll make a video about it. And then I can just title it like chat GBT made me make this video or some shit. And that'll, that'll be good. It'll go viral. You know, with all open AI, there's actually a, it, it just happened. I forgot. I'll put the image of the girl on the screen, yeah. but there's a, I think it's an OF girl that oh, is 100% yeah, yeah, yeah. fake. Yeah. When it's like generating like characters and stuff now too. 
what's crazy is like, I, you know, OF's already half fake because everyone who's messaging these people, they're not actually talking to that person. That's, but they can't think, say that. They think they are. Yeah, no, it is. But they're, they're not. They're like, chat with me. And then you're like, okay. And then it's like, they're hu- like, <laughs> their husband's like, yeah, love your wiener. <laughs> Looks nice. Squirt emoji, squirt emoji. How much money do you have to be being paid to respond to simps as your wife? Because you know they're sending some raunchy ass shit. Like, it's not like you look pretty. You know they're sending like dick pics and stuff. So as your husband, your wife's husband, you'd respond to dudes that think that's a wild concept, dude. I can't, my, my brain can't handle that right now. You're making that cash, dude. Who cares? How much cash do you need to make to respond to dudes that think they're talking to Taylor? I, I, I still think that's immoral. Yeah, I know. Like, I think if, if a girl says, you're like a good old boy from Virginia. I think if a girl Bible. says chat with me on yeah. my OF, I should be chatting with you. Are you mad because you did this? And you no, I'm just, n- no, I'm just yeah. saying like, I think it's, I think it's wrong. But then again, if it walks like mm. a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a duck. If you think you're talking to the person and it's not the person, but you think you're talking to the person, then who cares? That's a whole different debate. I don't know. Anyway, there was a girl that was a yeah. fake. They're, they're going to start doing that. But someone made a good analogy about how, you know, how you can say, um, you know, people want like, oh, you can create all these, the perfect OF person, the perfect YouTuber. But it's kind of like when you play a video game, you would much rather play against real people than bots. Same yeah. kind of thing, but it just doesn't feel the same. And I think that no matter what OpenAI goes into, I feel like you still want that to know that it's a real person. I think people just want attention, dude. I don't think they care. I think if you're getting attention, it doesn't matter if it's coming from a bot or not. Because mm. playing against a bot, if you didn't know it was a bot, would you care? I'd be pissed. I'd, like I'd, I'd feel swindled, swindled, but you wouldn't know. I can tell. If, 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 I, if, I can, if I can kill them very easily in Fortnite... I'm like, that was, that was, that that wasn't a person, a real person. You can't, yeah, (laughs) that wasn't a person, dude. What, what's next for you, man? Are we getting to the end? It's been over an hour. It's usually the end. I really have to pee. You going to sit down? Huh? I might not like, I'm really, it's really comfortable. Like, can I like step out for two seconds? No, we're, we're wrapping it up. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. It's been over an hour. Like I'm sitting here thinking like, when can I step out? Uh, man, I don't know. Moving. I want to, I want to make some YouTube videos. Joe, this podcast goes up in a week in like four days from My today. My video will be live. I swear. On, it goes up next Monday. I swear on something. I swear on dude's life. So I'm going to link your YouTube channel yes. and it's going to have a new video. 100%. People are like, wow, this is sick. It is actually a banger of a video too. It sets the bar real high though because now my other videos have to match that. And I keep, I fuck myself over with that. My... Not wanting to post a shit video makes it so I can't post videos because I'm always like, all right, this one's going to be better than the last one. And it never is. Okay. So there's me a new video out. Yes. Going to be exciting. You're moving. Yeah. What do you think about these kind of chill podcasts? Like I, I get their, I get their, I enjoy it. I think we should, I, I normally watch a lot of news recently. Haven't been nudes so yeah, news. Oh, uh, so yeah, normally I'm pretty up to date on all this stuff, but right now I'm kind of out of it because of the, the moving. Well, I, I feel like when I do when I do these, you know, the last one we did with Christian and you, yep. and it was it did really well. Even though people were like, "Oh, like y'all talked about the money thing for like way too long," which I think you said a comment, but I'm like, is, is like it's like I can't win sometimes. It's like, okay, do I need to talk about a lot of topics for I a think, short period of time? We just I think when we do these, we take like a couple of hot topics for the month and just kind of talk. Mm. We got we got LGBTQ, we got Ukraine. This will be the next one. We can do that in the What's next one. A bunch of documents just leaked. And apparently, apparently, we uh, possibly the U.S. might have some troops on the ground in Ukraine after we said we didn't, what? which does not look good for us. Yeah. Do you think it's un-American of me to literally have no idea? I think it's ignorant of me. Yeah. I literally have no idea what's going on in the world. Because here's, here, 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 here's, my, here's my thought, and this might be a hot take. Yeah. No matter what's going on, no matter how much I agree, disagree with something. Yeah. You know, it's like the thing, it's like everyone's like every vote matters, but in reality, you're like, my one vote literally doesn't matter. But it's find like, somebody that's voting, be like, you voting the other way? Like, let's not, it's a whole curve. <laughs> well, Larry, Larry yeah, David yeah, yeah. right there. But in my mind, I'm just like, not only does it, um, it doesn't interest me because, because I'm like, whatever happens, n- no matter how f- hard I agree or, or agree, disagree, it's Things are going to happen how they're going to happen. Yeah. I will say, I think so. I live my life less stress. When, when Russia went into Ukraine, it was a whole like, oh my God. And I, I know people that like had no clue. You're an example. 
perfect example. You have no clue what the fuck's going on. Yeah, I'm an idiot. And I would be like, initially I'd be like, oh, you're so stupid. But honestly, in the last year, like nothing's happened. Nothing's changed on our end. Gas got a little bit more expensive and we ran out of eggs. But like for the most part, yeah, you're right. No, well, no matter what your opinion is on it, like if you just kind of go about your day, like everything will be all right. That's what until I, shit pops off, like until yeah. we get bombed or something. But until but, then, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like when everyone's saying about like a lot of like uh, nuclear things are going yeah. on, I'm just like, yes, that is terrible. Yes, that would be terrible if the entire United States got wiped off. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What am I gonna do? What am, I mean, that's good. What yeah. am I gonna do? The because people that if are it happens, raging on social media aren't. It doesn't really matter, right? But like, I guess unless you're I, gonna like it's, build it's, a bunker and it's like in go buy food and stuff, like I mean, or you're really gonna matter. organize, you know, millions of groups, and then you're gonna go, you know, do something. Then I'm like, okay. But me as an individual, I'm not talking about a million people like me. Literally, just me. Yeah. Nothing I do will make a difference. No. But then people are gonna listen. To that, I'd be like, he's right. Now I'm not gonna do anything. Don't do that, guys. Y'all do it. Y'all do something. Yeah. Me specifically. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I I don't watch any news. I don't. I get all it my news from you out for no reason. I mean, you're right. I've I've stressed out about stuff on the news, and I didn't know. It's like I can do when about even it. political stuff, bro. It's like whenever someone wins, someone loses. People get. But I'm like, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I can't do anything. I will say from a political standpoint, I'm going to go live in a cave. We are at the worst place the United States has been in a very long time, <sighs> possibly ever. <sighs> Shit's going down right now. Like crimes through the fucking roof. Inflation's terrible. We're on the brink of war at all fucking times right now. There's a lot of stuff right now that's not great. Countries are moving away from the U.S. dollar as no, they're backing. I, I, I like, get there's it. a lot of stuff happening right now that's never happened before. I would say right now we're at a really shitty but spot. But let me ask you this. Yeah. You, yeah. as Joe knows best. Can't do anything. What are, what, as much as you're enraged about anything, yeah. what are you going to do to improve all of those problems? Let's talk some shit. That's all I can do. You're like, do. I'm going to create a lot about of it. tweets about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I can be as loud as possible. That's all anyone can do, dude. That's what, like, I, I, have, I have no power. I, 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 I totally agree with you. That felt good. If, say it again. I agree with you. No, no, you said the faithful thing. I totally agree with you. You like that? We got to end it on that one, okay. guys. All I'm right. going to wrap this podcast up. Joe's going to go sit down in the toilet. 100%. Thank you for watching the 50th filmed episode, even though this will be episode number, I don't know, um, actually going up. I'm mildly hammered at the time. Wait, it's not the 50th episode? I don't I, I don't put them up in the order that I filmed them. This is the uh, 50th one I filmed, I but I think it'll be yeah. like 48, gotcha. 47. Yeah, cool. Um, Joe's brand new YouTube video will be linked in the description. If it's not, let's pitchfork his home. I'll actually delete my channel this time. I said it last time, but I'll do it. A lot of the comments were talking about how you, you jumped it up a week and that's what happened. That's why I didn't do it because you said I had three weeks and then two weeks. Congrats. Video it's been four like, weeks since that. Because it, it, no, no, no. That reset it. Yeah, no, it didn't count. But it's going to be up. Yeah, this one. It will be up. All right. Go check out Joe's stuff. Leave some comments down below if you like this one. If you like the random topics. Again, I thought about going into like really, really deep stuff, but I was like, let's keep it. I think this is what people like. We go deep on the next one. Going deep on the next one. Yep. Why don't you guys leave some topics down below you'd like us to discuss? But the problem is we can't do it. We can do it kind of real time. Maybe I'll start filming them sh closer to when they're actually going to go up. I feel like so, ours we can because they're pretty easy. Yes. Yeah. Okie dokie. That'll be it for this episode of Don't Be Sour. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. New episodes every Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you. I gotta, I gotta, thank you so much for tuning in. Eat more sour strips. And ever forward, YouTube comment, give the podcast a rating. I don't know, dude. We're out. I have to pee so bad. You should really try sitting down when you pee. I think I might have like diabetes. I pee a lot now. I pee a lot.